pray. Just one person, just take one person. And I want you to listen, listen attentively. You're going to pray against this, work on this mic and the sound. We're going to pray against the spirit of death. Spirit of death over your family. Spirit of death in your vicinity. Are you hearing me? I heard the Lord say we should do this right now before I begin to minister. We're going to stand against the spirit of death. Satan is very tricky. And, but the Bible says we are not ignorant of his devices. There is so much distraction going on. So much distraction. And Satan is using that to snatch out certain people. This is a season you must listen to instructions more than ever before. Because I'll tell you the truth. There is no child of God that suddenly dies. No. There is always a warning. There is always a caution. Are you hear what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter the age. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It doesn't matter the age. But there is so much distraction. And this is what the devil wants to do. So that when you are distracted, even when the Lord is trying to bring something to your notice, you will not pay close attention to it. This period, you should be very, very sensitive. If the Lord drops anybody's name in your heart, the first thing you should begin to do is to start praying. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why the Lord has given us the ability to pray in the Spirit. So because you don't need to know what you're praying about. But times like this, you should be praying always. Praying always. Being sensitive. Listening to instructions. If you feel anything is off, check it again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Check again. This is not the time to say, I must do something. No. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. I must go on that journey. I must do. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Lord, if you don't want me to go, I don't have to go. I hear what I'm saying. So we're taking the next few minutes. Just pray. If you can pray in the spirit, please go ahead and pray in the spirit. But this is what we're praying about. We're praying against the spirit of death in your family, in your vicinity, in your neighborhood. We are just standing against that spirit of death. Death has no power over us. God has given us the victory over death. God has given us victory over death. We have victory over death. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance. I have come that they might have life and they might have it in abundance. I have come that they might have life. Jesus, we accept your ministry. We accept your ministry of life. We will have life. We have it in abundance. We have life. We will have it in abundance. We have life. We have it in abundance. We receive your ministry, Lord Jesus. We receive your ministry, Lord Jesus. Barnida, a grad, no ponde, sunde, hila.
Ela baba baba ku leku das zege baba baba breta ele bro mon on de katila barika vele reketa ponda fare ele ara ne pechusu luku pena pande e legeta mama retege be 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 arada baba 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 bara hande reke de be 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 no kolo broko bena ingrete le baruse velema rakune baneno ronto ongrita kune peperete ve reke taka 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 menendo bromda fonda frida benda frida Nina no no boko so pali adaba mreke de be baro ko ziki ande mana engre de bemba ba 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 reke ba 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 rata la ta rata engre no from de pele engre no ponto fara engre na luso lo no pendelila no pendelila lo pendelila akalo maneke de eno paru kusi e de pena haradi engro mo kwa aza ekane me nagadila. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I want you to listen. You know, here I will tell you the truth, whether it's what is popular or not. I will always tell you the truth. And I always tell you what I tell you, you can write it down, even if you don't understand it. One day, the Lord will make you understand. If He doesn't make you understand on time, when you see Jesus, He will confirm what I told you. And that's the confidence with which I teach. Hallelujah. Listen, there is nobody that have died that didn't go by choice. No one. No one. The moment a man leaves this body, he still has one opportunity to make a choice. I said, out of this body. When you leave your body, you're not dead yet. I want you to listen to me because I know a lot of God's children have not been taught these things, so they don't know. When you leave this body, you still have one more decision to make. Whether you go to heaven or paradise or wherever uh, the dead in Christ go to, or you go to hell it still has to be your choice you know the bible lets us know that life and death is where in the power of the tongue i've personally had an experience when i left my body some of you have shared that with you before now, I always thought that to be true until that experience. That experience confirmed it in an amazing way. I stepped out and I saw myself ascending so fast beyond control, but I knew I was ascending. And at that first stage, you are not in control. You, you just know that you're going. And I got to this place. You can see the earth far. You just, you're just going. You can't do nothing about it. And then I got to this place where the speed became slow. Now, at that fast rate, your mind is working, but there is just nothing your mind can do. Then you get to the stage where the speed becomes like normal. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You're still moving up, but not at the same speed. And then at that stage, I realized I could talk. I realized I had some measure of control. Like I said, in the first stage, your mind is still alert. Your mind is working. You know you're moving up, but that's all you can think about. But at this stage, I became aware that... I could reason, I could talk. I just felt I had some control. And then looking up, I knew 
that there is a place that if you pass that place it's going to be fast again i just knew that one by i didn't experience that but i just knew that if you cross this line i think I, I can't say somebody told me i just knew that if you cross that line that's it and then i said to myself I, I said it i just said no this is not how i plan to live i said it and i said no this is not how i plan to live and I, that's all i kept saying this is not how I plan to live. I will not lie to you, there was so much anxiety in my heart. I wanted to see what is beyond. I knew it was glorious. You, you can see it. You can see that it's something sweet. You can see that it's compelling. I, saw, I felt all that. But I just said to myself, ah, not like final decision. This is not how I plan to go. And before God, that's the only thing I was uttering. And suddenly, like something just sucked you out, you know. I just, the, the way I came down was not the way I was going up. I came down, landed on the street. While I was trying to turn and understand where I was, I opened my eyes on my bed. I sat down and I began to think, like, what just happened? And the word of the Lord came to me. I said, the state of your soul here is the same state of your soul when you leave this body. I've had testimonies of people who descended to hell and came back. The story is the same. If I've not experienced that, I may not be able to relate with their story. But I've had people share their story that they came out, they were descending so fast they couldn't control it. But they got to a place, they knew this was hell. But they got to a place where the, the, the movement was slow. And they could pray. They could pray. And they began to pray. I said, Lord, no. No. And then, either they, they their own, like I've heard the one who said, I heard a voice. I hear what I'm saying. I heard a voice. And I was snatched out. And they came back to life. I looked at those testimonies and I said this thing, God's word is true. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. The problem is this, many people are not aware because they have not been taught. Listen, I know what I felt going up. I know what I felt. If I was not schooled, see, you've heard me say before that Many years ago, I got to a stage in my life where I was trying to prove divine health in my body. I get what I'm saying. I was sick at that time, and I told myself, I said, look, we're not going to take drugs. I'm going to declare God's word until I become healed. And at that stage, because my health was deteriorating, everybody was concerned for me. But I said to myself, no way. There was a night that the thought came to me. He said, the way you're going, what if you die? And I said to myself, I said, eh, it's not a problem. If I die, I know I'm not in doubt. She, I'll go to where Jesus is. When I get to where Jesus is, I will personally fix an appointment with Jesus. Like, no, I want to see you. I will ask him, Lord, what went wrong? What didn't I do right? I was believing you based on what you said or what you said. What went wrong? I said, he will explain to me. And when he explains to me, I said, thank you, sir. Now that I know better, I want to go back. I was on this earth. I'm telling you what I'm, I made that decision. I said, this is the worst that can happen. If I leave this body, I will come back. And then the thought came to me. But they said, when you see when you get there, you won't want to come back. I say, not me. See, I'm not, I'm not scared. You know, some people have this mentality, you know, heaven at last. You find yourself there, say, ah, please, I don't want to go back to that sinful world. I have no doubt in my heart that I'm a child of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? I have no doubt. But I'm no use. 
in heaven or wherever they go to. I'm of no use. This is where I'll be of use. So why don't we finish it? Now I'm telling you that that has been my mentality long ago, not just because of that experience. Long ago, that was the state of my soul. That was the state of my mind. So when it happened, my mind was still the same. Like, what is this? Where are we going to? Are you understand what I'm saying? People that descend into hell, they've been so terrified and heard, heard the message of judgment so much that they see the gate of hell and they say, ah, all they can think about is their sins. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? Ah, I'm finished. I'm finished. I'm finished. That's all they will be saying. They may cry, but there is no faith in the Lord Jesus. And, I mean, there's nothing holding you. You're crying, but you're crying out of fear. And the person is gone. Those who are sent, they are so anxious to see that glory. That even if you're calling them back, <laughs> they'll be wondering. <laughs> so if they have to make a decision, ah, Lord, into your hands I commit my spirit. <laughs> and they are gone. We need to teach people the truth that they may understand him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it's always a decision. It's always a decision. We're going to pray one more last prayer. Say, Father, let your truth. You see, Jesus said, Jesus said, he that believes in me, though he is dead, he will live again. He that believes in me and is alive will not die. Question is, when he says he that believes in me, what do you believe in him? What do you believe I believe in Jesus. What exactly do you believe when you say, I believe in Jesus? You just believe that there is one Jesus that is there? You just believe he died to save you from sin? Okay, so what impact have that made in your life? We're going to pray, Lord, fill the earth with your truth. Are you hearing me? Jesus said, I have come that they might have life. And that they might have it in abundance. If that is his ministry, why are we not receiving his ministry? Why are we condoning deaths? Somebody dies, oh, thank God he was born again. Uh, but are you, did he receive the ministry of Jesus? Somebody said, I came to make you wealthy. And the person has come and is living in your house. Are you getting what I'm saying? And 10 years down the line, you're still a pauper. Is something not wrong? Either the person is lying that he came to make you wealthy or you are not understanding what the person is doing and we know in this case jesus will not tell a lie he said i am come that they might have life he told us who kills but he says his ministry is to give you life and to give it in abundance if your heart is filled with his truth even death will be scared of you Telling you the truth. Lift up your voice. Say, Lord, fill the earth with your truth. Fill the earth with your truth. Fill the earth with your truth. Makuta bayada. Fill the earth with your truth. Oh, let, let, let the sons of God receive the ministry of God. Let them receive the ministry of Jesus Christ. Lord, fill the earth with your truth. I call this kalabantara. Ikatuma papundi silike do bradila has calabrono. Rocondu skinny parki kakande kenda brika dandera. Rekeda baba babrondo frata kados. Yambre nyambre la itoporo kotobenena. Inkala baba babaraka de panandina. Ilamanta kadaba shalika beno. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Precious Lord Jesus, you came to give us life. You came to give us life. And that's the work you have given to us, the assignment you have given to us, is that we go and minister life. We accept your ministry. We accept your assignment. And I declare tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
anyone hearing the sound of my voice that for whatever reason have been a mark for death I cancel such right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ anyone hearing the sound of my voice right now for whatever reason you have been marked for death tonight I reverse it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Jesus came to give life receive his life and live in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the same vein I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus every sickness every pain whatever it is that have been in your body right now I command it to go I command it to leave I command it to leave in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the noise you're hearing in your ears stop right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ be free I command pains to leave your bodies every kind of pain leave your body now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ thank you Holy Spirit thank you Lord because you are the teacher and we receive your ministry tonight thank you thank you in Jesus precious name we pray hallelujah before you sit down just greet everyone around you say look I'm so glad to see you tell them you leave you will leave you will leave you will leave you will leave thank you Lord Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord you may take your seat praise his holy name hallelujah I'm going to be sharing with us briefly tonight on what I titled the manifestation of the sons of God hallelujah give me Romans chapter 8 and verse 19 Romans chapter 8 and verse 19. If you're here with your Bibles, turn quickly. Romans 8, 19. Praise God. It says, For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of who? Of who? Talk to me now. Are you here? Praise God. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly, eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Creation is waiting till the sons of God, sons of God are revealed. They are waiting earnestly. You know what it is? You know what the word earnestly means? Eagerly waiting. Getting, almost saying, getting impatient, waiting. Waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Praise God. Praise God. They are waiting. But John chapter 1 and verse 12 tells us something. You have to be very, very fast. I have a short time. It says, but as many as received him. Now, who's the him there? Who's the him there? Jesus. But as many has received him to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name so the earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God right right and then he says there are people who will receive Jesus 
For as many as receive Jesus, they are given the power, they are given the rights to become children of God. So you are not born a child of God. Are you following me? You are not born a child of God. There is something that happens to you that makes you to become a child of God. Praise God. But the earth is eagerly waiting for the children of God to manifest. It is waiting for them. And there have been a prophecy that there is a season on the earth where the sons of God are going to show up. Are you hearing? Are you hearing? That's why Jesus talking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3 said something to him. He says, you must be born again. Praise God. He said it to him. He says, you must be born again. For except a man is born again, he cannot enter. He cannot see he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, give me verse, John chapter 3 now. Give me John chapter 3. I want to show you something. From verse 3. From verse 3. Or let's just jump to verse. Okay, let's go to verse 5. Let's go to verse 5. Jesus speaking, he says, Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the, and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Next verse. That which is born of the flesh is what? Flesh. flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is what? Spirit. Now when you are born naturally, you were born of the flesh. Are you hearing me? You are born of the flesh, and that's why you are flesh. People have made this mistake to say, oh, man is a spirit. He has a soul, and he lives in a body. No, sir. No. Man was not made a spirit. Man was made a living soul. When God made Adam, what did he say? The Bible said God breathed, breathed into him the breath of life, and man became what? A living soul. And in Genesis chapter 6, God himself confessed and said, my spirit will not always strive with man because he is indeed flesh. Are you listening to me? That's what God said. He said, my spirit will not always strive with man because man is flesh. Oh, but I thought God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Isn't that what he said before he made Adam? I've taught you this. That's what he said. Praise God. That's what he said. But when he made Adam, he didn't make Adam in his image and in his likeness. Adam was to become his image and his likeness. But he hadn't gotten there yet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He hadn't gotten there yet. So God made him and put two trees in the garden. He said, this tree, don't eat of it. For the day you eat of it, you will surely die. And I've told you that before that God really, the translators um, just mixed that thing up. God didn't say you will never eat of the tree. He actually said you will not freely eat of that tree. What does that mean? You, are only, you will only eat of that tree when I permit you. That's why when you look at the instruction, it says for of every tree in the garden, you may freely eat. The key word there is freely. But this one, you will not freely eat it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you will only eat it in the day that I command you to eat it. You know, some people say, oh, why did God didn't want them to eat the tree? Why did he put it there? He wanted them to eat of the tree. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But there is a season where they will be permitted to eat of that tree. There were two trees there. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then there was another tree, which is called the tree of life. Now, they ate the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, being tempted of the devil. See, Satan wanted to know what was in that tree. He didn't know. He didn't understand. Why, which jazz is this that God will put in a tree? What he never understood was that there was nothing in the tree. Praise <laughs> God. There was nothing in the tree. Nothing. It was a normal tree. That's why Eve was deceived. Because all this while, they just said, ah, don't go there. Adam told that. 
you know, God gave the instruction to Adam. Then Eve came later. You know, you can imagine. No, now, don't think immediately God made Adam. He now looked at Adam. Look, hey, it's not good for man to be alone. No, sir. Adam had lived for a while. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? He had lived for a while, for many years. And God saw how he was going around the garden. He was just alone and doing things. And God thought to himself, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him help me. So when he made Eve, Adam had the responsibility of taking her around the garden and showing her all the things he's known. And just imagine them, them passing by this and saying, so, so what is this? She goes, ah, don't, don't even touch this tree. Eh, I see this tree. Ah, just don't go near it at all eh, if you don't want to die. So she kept wondering, why would he say that about the tree. And so when the devil came, he said, uh -uh, look at the tree again. It's a normal tree. It is tree. It has fruits. The Bible says she looked at the tree when she saw that it was a tree that has fruit that was good for food. All this while, she thought this tree was just a mystery. Then she realized that, but wait, oh, this thing is just mango, you know, or apple, like we all believe it was. Praise God. You know, that, this thing is just apple now. So what's so special? about it and she took it and ate it nothing happens to her if anything had happened to her she would have told her husband honey i don't know the way i'm feeling though <laughs> you understand? but nothing happened to her even lucifer even the, the serpent was wondering waiting to see what will happen because he didn't know so he watched her watched her like give your husband maybe it's when you give your husband or something will happen Adam to ate the tree. Nothing happened. I say, oh, but the eyes were open. No. It was the same devil when he realized nothing. <laughs> See, he was the one that told them that they are now naked. Now, because he was wondering what the God put in that tree. Remember, he had been in Eden before. Yo, you don't know that. This is not, we're not doing Bible study now. Praise God. But, but go and find out yourself. <laughs> Praise God. Satan has been in Eden before. Satan was the one that was ruling the earth before Adam was created. He was the one in charge. There was life before now. Some of you are here looking at me. Yes, there was life. Now, simple scientific or history knowledge, right? Right? Now they say the earth has been here for roughly about six, five to six thousand years. Maybe not up to six thousand years. That's what history tells us, right? Man, man has been around. So if you calculate age until Adam, and we all know Adam was the first man, right? If you calculate age up to Adam, you calculate about five thousand nearly 6,000 years that man, if you calculate all the children, you know you can now, just like say calculate your family to the fourth generation. Go and ask your parents to ask your grandparents or whatever they told you. You understand what I'm saying? But then you've read or heard about animals that existed on earth, like dinosaurs, right? And they'll tell you, archaeologists will tell you that they, this is not their imagination they found bones or they found um, fossils that when they tested it, it's dating back to millions of years. Hmm? Talk to me now. There are people who have found um, cities under the earth that they cannot tell which civilization it was. Are you listening to me? But they know that it dates beyond Adam. Praise God. So Lucifer was here. There was man, but not this man that God had. So the, the explanation there is what the evolutionalists, you know, came about. And they are so convinced with, that, look, man evolved from apes. You've heard those stories before. Man evolved from apes. Now, there is a possibility that they are right, but not this man. I hear what I'm saying. 
the man that existed, because the Bible lets us know that there were cities. One day I'll, one day I'll take you through this study, because you need to be armed. See, some of you are just looking at me and saying, Pastor, is it the same Bible we are reading? <laughs> but listen to me, there's, there's somewhere I'm going to. So, Lucifer was the one in charge. And this chief that God is giving man the instruction about, he has never seen it before. He has never seen it before. So he was in amazement. He was wondering what exactly is God up to. I told you the reason God did not destroy Lucifer and the reason God cannot destroy Lucifer because God gave him eternal life. Lucifer has eternal life. So he cannot be destroyed. Not now, not forever. You understand what I'm saying? He can never be destroyed. So he will only be put in prison. If, if God had not given him eternal life, it's a possibility. But because God had given him eternal life, but then he still went astray. That's why I don't understand when people are saying, once saved, always saved. And it implied that you cannot not be unsaved. You don't know how far Lucifer went with God. To kick him out of, to kick him out of this place, the council of heaven had to meet. Do you understand what I'm saying? To take that decision. So God now said, let us make man. So Lucifer watching and seeing and because, I mean, he's not been thrown out yet. So he's still roaming around. So he's watching and seeing, ah, no, something. So he ate the fruit. Adam ate the fruit. Then he came back and said, mm -mm. see, you guys are naked now. He said, eh, we know. Because the Bible said they were naked and they were not ashamed. So he said, you guys are naked now. Say, eh, we know we're naked. Say, fools. You don't know what nakedness means. Say, we know. You don't know. This is what nakedness means. You need to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> now, he was the one that put fear and shame in their heart. Because they believed him to eat the fruit, they believed the explanation of nakedness that he gave to them. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So when God showed up and God said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, we heard your voice and hid ourselves because we were, we are naked. What did God say? Who told you? Are you guys what I'm saying? Now, because what they said to God, naked, was not what God told them. So God was hearing a new phrase from their mouth. No, God didn't say, who told you you are naked? God actually, the literal thing God says, who told you naked? Are you getting what I'm saying? Who told you this word you just gave me now? Who gave it to you? Who told you? God knows Satan. Do you understand what I'm saying? Have you gone to eat? Ah, the woman you gave me, she gave me the fruit and I ate Eve, what have you done? No, it's not me. It's the serpent that began me. And God said, you. So already the earth has been programmed because the reason it was destroyed and everything there was wiped away was because God brought judgment on the earth. Are you getting what I'm saying? So God brought judgment on the earth because of all the evil that was done in it. He brought judgment. And the destruction and judgment that he brought on it, on it was a flood. It was by a flood he destroyed everything. So Noah's flood was not the first flood. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So this time he destroyed everything. And then he made man again. And you know the story, evil now came up again on the earth. And evil was multiplying. Ah, God looked at the earth and said, what is this? Sometimes you don't understand how God feels. He's done this thing before. It was it went haywire, he destroyed it. Now he's done it again, and then everything is going haywire. He said, look, I'm going to destroy it again. But this time, I will not destroy everything like I did before, right? So he told Noah, build an ark. Noah built the ark and saved his family and all the animals. You know that story. And then when they finished, and Noah offered us a sacrifice, God asked himself that question. How many times will I be going around in circles? So he said to Noah, I said, look, I am not going to bring a flood 
on the earth to destroy everything as I have done. God was not just saying that because of Noah. God was saying that to himself. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. He said, I will not go this route again. I must come up with another strategy. So this one, we will not do it again. So Noah, this is what we're going to do. Whenever I'm causing a cloud to come on the earth, I will cause a bow to come in the cloud. The moment I see that bow, I'll remember my covenant and I'll rethink. I'll have a rethink. So no more flood is going to destroy the earth again. Praise God. But like I said, the earth knows that it has been judged. But it has been judged with a promise that there is a people that are going to come on you. And they are going to walk in righteousness. They are going to do what is right in you. You are going to be properly used for the purpose that God created you. And those were the sons of God that he spoke about. So he says the earnest expectation of the creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. So the earth has always been waiting. When are these people going to come? When are these people? When Adam was formed, the earth was happy. Wow. Maybe they are the ones. Let's watch and see. And then Adam sinned. And they heard God complain and says, my spirit will not always strive with me, for he is indeed flesh. Ah, okay, so what's going to happen? And Jesus came. And they saw Jesus. Jesus, oh, Jesus lived the life that God wanted man to live from the beginning. Praise God. He lived the life. He lived, they saw Jesus do righteousness. Everywhere he went, the whole earth was glad. The earth was happy. They, they, they see Jesus command the storm and the storm listens to him. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Jesus looked at a tree. He was hungry. He thought the tree is going to have fruits in it. And then he went there, checked it. There was no fruit. He said, what nonsense is this? Nobody will eat of this fruit. The ground said, yes, sir. And the just, ground just dried up supplies. The ground just cut up that tree from every supply that it could. By the next day, the tree had dried up. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? Everything was responding to Jesus. So much so that they asked, what manner of man is this? But Jesus made it clear that it's not just for me. <laughs> Praise God. Jesus kept saying that everything I do, I do by the Father who dwells in me. Everything I do, I do by the Holy Spirit. Everything, the Holy Spirit is everything. And so Jesus began to tell them, look, hey guys, it is better for you that I go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. Remember, he told Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So you keep giving birth to flesh. So everything that you see here is flesh. But that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So only those that are born of the Spirit will be spirits. And so Jesus was so eager to leave this place. <laughs> Praise God. He said, I've got to go. I've got to go. He said, look, you guys, because I said I'm going away, sorrow has filled your hearts. He said, but nevertheless, it is better for you that I go. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will take up mine and he will reveal to you. He said, he will teach you all things. He said, he will guide you into all truth. But the most important thing the Holy Spirit does in our life is to see to it that we are born of the what? Spirit. Give me, give me John chapter 1. John chapter 1 and verse. Give me that verse 12 and 13. 12, 13. I want you to see this. It says, but as many as received him. So we come to Jesus and we receive Jesus. Praise God. As many as receive him. To them he gave the right to become the children of God. To those who believe in his name. Give me the next verse. Who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Who is he talking about? Every other person was born of the flesh. What does it mean, born of the flesh? Mommy got married to daddy, or you know what I mean. They, there was a meeting, and then uh, they decided, oh, I think it's time for us to have children. Okay, or maybe they didn't even decide, whatever. <laughs> Praise God. But, but there, something transpired, right? 
And then someone got pregnant. Oh, keep it. And then they nurtured it for nine months. And then they gave back to that child. That child is born of the flesh. Is born of the will of man. But he said, this one, they are born. But not the same way that man and woman gives birth to a child. Now you get to what I'm saying. He said, but these ones, they are born of God. Are you following me? They are born of God. What do you mean born of God? John could have literally written instead of God here, spirits. Are you getting what I'm saying? God says, not of blood. Say, this child is my blood. <laughs> you heard men talk like that. It's men that talk like that. He said, this is my blood. What do they mean? It is me that transferred because the sperm carries the blood. You understand what I'm saying? I'm the one that transferred. You are my blood. You are my blood. Now, that's what every man can boast about until you receive Jesus. The moment you receive Jesus, you are born again. You are born the second time. This time around, not of blood. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man. Look, I am the one that gave back to you. I am your father. Uh -uh. When you get born again, uh, I'm sorry to say, Daddy, uh, something else has happened. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I am now born of God. The only one that can lay claim to me and say, I, I give back to you, is who? Is God. Praise God. Are you following me? So they are born of God. Give me 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 from verse 1. Quickly, quickly, quickly. 1 John chapter 3, he says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it, does, it did not know him. He's telling here that the world does not know us. Praise God. The world does not know us. But hey, we've received such precious gifts. What manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called who was he referring to he's referring to the people that received jesus are you following me are you following me because john was not writing this letter to the whole world he was writing this letter to believers he was writing this letter to god's children so he says behold what manner of love the father has bestowed on us this thing that the earth has been waiting for since what's the love the father bestowed on us? that we should we we should be called the children of god Therefore, the world does not know us because the world did not know him. Give me the next verse. Give me verse 2. I want us to read this together. One to go. Those of you that can see it. One to go. Beloved, when? Now. We are children of God. When? 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 Now. John says, hey, what a blessing. That the Father has bestowed on us. That we should be called. This prophecy that was spoken of many, many years ago. This promise that was given to the earth many, many years ago. That hey, a season will come when the sons of God will arise. You will see them. John was saying, hey, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. That we should be those ones that will be called the sons of God. And just in case you are in doubt, wondering what he's talking about, he said, beloved, beloved, not in the future, not when we get to heaven. He said, beloved, when? Now, now, are we the sons of God? And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be like. Because, you know, if we look at ourselves, we, we, we didn't turn white, you know, we didn't turn to white people, we didn't turn, white we didn't turn to black people, we didn't turn red. We, we've received Jesus, but we still look the same like every other person. But John is saying here, hey, <clears throat> but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Is. Are you following me? Are you following me? He is not saying here that even though we are the sons of God, eh, we don't have to struggle to live like that yet. You know, we will just chill. We will just know and believe in our. No, remember, he says, beloved, now, now we are the sons of God. What's he talking about? We have been born of the Spirit of God. We have been born of the Spirit of God, and because we have been born of the Spirit of God. We carry the life of God in us. We carry the blood of God in us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We carry the DNA of God in us. That is who we are. When? When? Now. We are the fulfillment of that prophecy that God spoke about to the earth. The earth has been waiting for us to show up. 
To show up and do what? To show up and walk in righteousness. Praise God. Give me, let me show you something. Same first John chapter 3. Kalima Ruko Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give me verse 10. Give me verse 10. It says, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. So while the earth is waiting for the children of God, there is also those that are called the children of the devil. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Can I tell you something? There is the children of God, there is the children of the devil, and there, is, there are the children of Adam. There are three species of people on the earth. What are the classification? The children of God, the children of the devil, the children of Adam. Are you listening to me? Now, when I say the children of Adam, I'm talking about those who are born of the flesh, right? Coming from Adam, right? When I talk about the children of God, they are the ones that are born again. They are the ones that have received Jesus. They were born of the flesh, but now they have been born again. Praise God. Are you following me? They have been born again. So now they are the sons of God. Now they are the children of God. Now here, John is saying, in this, this is how the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. This is how you know the children of God and the children of the devil. Meaning, now we are the sons of God, right? So you can know the children of God now. Then there are the children of the devil. He said, this is how they are made manifest. This is how you know them. How do you know them? Whoever does not practice. Take note of the word practice. Whoever does not practice what? Righteousness, Righteousness is not of God. Whoever does not practice, he uses the word practice. You understand what the word practice is? Continuous doing. Continuous doing. Praise God. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. He said, this is how you know. This is how they are made manifest. The children of the devil cannot practice righteousness. The children of the devil cannot love. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They are selfish. They cannot love. Give me the next verse. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Go on. Not as Cain, who was the, who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. Now watch this. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. Why did Cain kill Abel? Not because they were dragging anything. Because Abel was practicing righteousness. And Cain was not happy because he was not willing to submit himself to practice righteousness. Are you getting? So I think I told you that last week. Was it last week or week before last? I told you that the reason God did not accept Cain's offering was not because Cain brought rotten fruits. No, God actually, it's not the offering God rejected. God rejected his person. God rejected the person that brought the offering. So God says, uh -uh, if you, do, you go do what is right. Do righteousness and you'll be accepted. Praise God. He said, why did Cain kill Abel? Because Simply because Cain's works are good. Have you been at, jo at your job? And they hate you just because you do righteousness. <clears throat> you understand what I'm saying? Just because you do righteousness. Just because you will not compromise like them. You will not steal like them. You will not tell lies like them. And they look at you and say, look, they even plot against you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan instigates people against the sons of God. But I'll tell you something. Anytime that instigation comes, it comes to prove who you are. Your life is to practice righteousness. You remember we read in Jeremiah, it says, let him that glory, glory in this, that he knows and understands God, that he is a God who loves to exercise. He used the word exercise, loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. 
he loves to exercise it. He loves to keep doing it. Praise God. So now he says the one who keeps doing righteousness is of God. Why? It is the same spirit that is working in God that is working in him. The continuous ability, the continuous willingness to practice righteousness, to do what is right. Not because somebody is watching you. Not because somebody is standing at your back to accuse you. No, because there is a spirit that you are born of. There is a spirit that is inside you urging you on to do that which is right. The day you cross the line and do something that is wrong, you feel uneasy. You just feel uneasy. Why? Because you're in, a, you're in the wrong zone. You see, true children of God, you don't keep telling them, you must do this, you must do this, you must do that. I've told you this before. The reason God gave the Ten Commandments, or all the commandments he gave, he knew because he was preparing them for the Holy Spirit. He was preparing them for the day that he will give birth to them. Are you getting what I'm saying? He knew that they by themselves cannot keep all those laws. He knew. He knew they would not be able to keep it except by the Holy Spirit. So today, by reason of being born of the Spirit, we are not struggling to keep the law. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because we dwell in the Spirit. We dwell in the Holy Spirit. So it says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So those who are led by the Spirit of God, they realize that their lives fulfill the law. What does it mean to fulfill the law? Their lives show the righteousness of the law. So God said, thou shalt not steal. Okay, a man who's born of the Holy Spirit, he's tempted because he has need. He's wondering what is he going to do. He goes in and he begins to pray. And God gives him an idea. Oh, yes, I know what to do. He steps out and he does it and he produces money. Are you get what I'm saying? When he produces money, he says, oh, I didn't have to steal. Are you understand what I'm saying? So he looks at his life. He said, no wonder God says thou shalt not steal. He's not living his life. Say, hey, I don't want to steal. Though. You know like some, some, some believers do. Say, why don't you want to say, I don't want to, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go. That's not a good enough reason. The reason we don't do wrong is not because we are afraid of the judgment of God. The reason we don't do wrong is because there is a spirit in us compelling us to do what is right. So we yield to that spirit. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So when someone says, ah, if you, if you notice uh, that... Uh, the, 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 the spirit of lust is troubling you. Go, go and fast and pray. Go and fast and pray. No. What you need is to learn how to submit to the spirit of God. And you understand what I'm saying? Fasting and praying can help you get there. But you know, because people just think when I fast for 14 days, by that time I would have been charged and the spirit of lust will be gone. I tell you the truth. By the 16th day, it will be around you again. <laughs> because you only spent... You only spent 14 or 15 days away from it. Do you understand what I'm saying? But what done was zero. I was sharing with the leaders. I said, oh, I'll fast and pray. You'll be shocked that the day he's breaking the fast, he's fornicating. Because he tells himself that he has tried. Ah, 15 days, he has tried. I said, ah, let me, let me call that my girlfriend and test it. <laughs> if you tell yourself, ah, if she comes here, yeah, nothing, nothing will happen. Nothing. Will. You don't know that Satan. That Satan that's talking to you. You don't realize it. It's Satan that is telling. You, call her. Call her. Now that you have fasted, this thing, fasting and prayer doesn't mean you will see God. Though. Jesus fasted forty days and forty nights. The only recorded encounter he had was with the devil. So what, what makes you think because you're fasting, Satan will be scared of you? He, you are the one he will come after. He knows no angel will stop him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Jesus himself, fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And Satan comes and if you are the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Jesus handled him. He didn't go. He said, okay, um, you, you know scriptures. I'm coming. He came back. He said, come, let me show you something. He took him up the pinnacle. He said, see where this place is? If you jump down, it is written. He has given his angels charge concerning you. That should appeal to you. Why don't you test it? 
Imagine Jesus just feeling that, wow, I'm too holy now. See, I've had that experience before. I've told you, I've told you before. In, in my school then, there's this place we go to pray. It's called the dam. Now, in the dam, the way it's constructed, is a construction they did where the water gathers. And there's a very place that the water falls in, okay? So sometimes we just love to pray there because we want to shout. And we know the noise of the water. So even if you're praying there and you're shouting and screaming, nobody will, nobody will bother you. In fact, they will be hear your voice. It's the water they will be hearing. So we love to go there to pray. So I was praying there one day. I was praying. And oh dear, my, the whole place was charged. Literally, literally, you, you can touch the presence of God. I was alone. Not night. This was day, broad daylight, afternoon. I was praying. The presence of God was so... It was a glorious experience. While I was just enjoying the presence of God, I was just enjoying and just walking around the place and glorifying God. And suddenly, I just looked down and I heard a voice. Do you know if you jump down right now with all this anointing, nothing will happen to you? <laughs> I'm telling you. I heard, when I heard that voice, I staggered back. <laughs> I staggered back. I'm like, this was... I'm not saying the presence of God left, then this happened. In the midst of enjoying that presence, I heard that voice. Someone who's not knowledgeable will respond to that voice. Listen, oh, some of you have not experienced these things before. You, you just feel like paper. You feel like paper. Like your legs are not touching the ground. Wow, just, I, just, I just look down. Do you know if you jump down right now? <laughs> I staggered. As I staggered back, I said, what was that? Then I heard the voice of the Lord. I said, now you know what Jesus experienced. I said, devil, get out of this place. The, the tangible presence of God did not stop him. This is how people have been in fasting and you hear that they went to commit suicide. They heard a voice. They thought it was the voice of God. Do you know if you stab yourself now, the knife will not enter. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So what you must learn to do is to yield to the Holy Spirit. Yield to him. Yield. As many as are led. Every day, you entrust yourself to him. Say, Holy Spirit, you know I'm born of you. I'm a spirit. Now that you're born again, you're born of the spirit. So now you can say, I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. And I'm controlled by the spirit of God. And this is the nature of the Holy Spirit is love. This is why it is not a difficult thing for believers to walk in love. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I know my time is up. Praise God. It's not a difficult thing. As sons of God, we have been called to manifest his nature, to manifest his character, and his character is love. Love. And love is not about buying flowers. No, it's much more than that. Love is taking responsibility. Taking responsibility. When you say to somebody, I love you, you're actually saying, I'll take responsibility for it. Do you know what that means? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What do you think God was doing? He was taking responsibility for the one he loved. So what's the problem? Sin is the problem. I'll fix it. How will I fix it? I'll see. Responsibility. Responsibility. Are you getting what I'm saying? So God responded because he had the ability. So he needed a sacrifice for man. He responded with his ability. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So Jesus came, he sacrificed Jesus, he took responsibility for man's sins. I tell people, don't believe when somebody says, I love you, until you check the ability of the person. Praise <laughs> God. I hear what I'm saying. Yes. You need to check what's your ability. Because if you don't have ability, I'm sorry, you cannot respond. You can't, no matter how willing you are. Are you understanding what I'm saying? No matter how willing you are. Many years ago, I dated this girl. And just maybe not even up to one month into a relationship, she said she wants to change her car. I said, eh. 
As I scratch in my head, <laughs> okay, um, so how are you going to do it? <laughs> no, eventually she did change the car. In fact, I didn't know when she changed the car. <laughs> she just changed the car. I said, God, I don't have ability here. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how I was willing to, I was willing to, many years ago, I was willing to, I wish, I wish I had all the power, I wish I could buy a car for her, do you understand what I'm saying? But I didn't have the ability. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you must understand, but in this case, God has given us ability. Why? Because the Holy Spirit dwells in us. Stand up on your feet, everybody. You're going to pray and say, Holy Spirit, I submit to you. I submit to you. I'm a child of God. I'm the one the earth has been waiting for. The earth sees me walk on it every day and it rejoices. Why? Because I do righteousness on the earth. I do righteousness on the earth. Go ahead and pray. Say, Holy Spirit, I follow your leading. I follow your leading. For as many as are led, as many as are led, <clears throat> as many as are led, I follow your leading, Lord. I follow your leading. Nakota Baprete Shagaba do brende de disca la brondo fehita. Enabarambo do fradusi ge de bane firi itabarga daya. Regebe meno bandoski la barge dila. Zagaya zagaya. Ay no manto bali zeke tabaruto vena mande. Repepete lekete bene broko sapadida. Because we are born of God, we do not take sickness into our body. Because we are born of God. Sin is not in us. We practice righteousness because the Spirit of God dwells in us. I yield to the Holy Spirit. I yield to the Holy Spirit. Ekaya, nepena, nepena, rebebebedo, rokopatele gedamina, reketa parata, ele paruno so gedena, incre, ne disca bardosia, rebedom, rokosali kabaya, enina and the prando, lobado, lakita katatatatea. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He says, Beloved, now. Are we the sons of God now? Are we the sons of God? If you have received Jesus Christ in this place, now you are the son of God. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, I will, I live as a son of God. I live as a child of God. I bear witness, I bear testimony that I'm a child of God. The earth, the earth bears testimony. Alo breke shabayande en credanando brongo bo do fredi cadela barke ne de 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 la broko sale reke da babara la baba borroko bena frede manina en arotel no sale gemena broko nis kele braka tale barande la bedom brongo sele barke na mantalia Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. For adventure, you are here. Maybe there's someone here. You're not sure. You're not sure where you stand. Am I a child of God? Am I not a child of God? If any man receive him, for as many as receive him, he gave them the power. He gave them the right to become sons of God. Your part is to receive him. He's the one that gives you the right. He's the one that gives you the ability to become. You don't become of your own self. You receive the ability from him. If you would just say, Lord, I receive you right now. Maybe you're watching online. 
It's the same thing. I receive you right now. That's your part. In all honesty, Lord Jesus, I receive you. I receive you. And his spirit is there. Wherever you are, his spirit is there. And he will supply you that spirit. Then you'll be born of the spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you receive these ones and baptize them like Jesus have said. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Everybody say this after me. Say, Father, you promise the earth that a time is coming where it will witness the manifestation of your sons. Lord, by reason of your work in me, I am a child of God. I am the fulfillment of that prophecy to the earth. I walk on the earth as a child of God. The earth sees my walk as the work that it expects of me. Earth, hear me. I am a child of God. And I walk on you. I act on you. The things God has predetermined. And you will be a witness. And you will rejoice. Every day I wake up. The earth rejoices. It wants to hear my voice. It wants to see me walk. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I bring joy to the earth. 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 To the earth. Thank you, Lord. This is the story of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Wherever you go, the earth will rejoice to see you. Whatever you say, the earth will quickly answer you. Because it recognizes that you are different. You are a child of God. It has expected you this long. Now you have come. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.